Hello, and welcome to episode 90 of the Inventive Marketing Club. We're here every week to help you build a better marketing strategy. On this week, I'm going to be talking to you about hacking your website with HTML and CSS. If you don't know what those mean, don't worry. We'll be diving into those in a moment. But this topic is actually quite important for anyone who owns a website. So I'm going to be exploring some of the reasons you might want to understand what HTML is, uh, as well as some crafty CSS tricks. So whether you're new to WordPress or you're just managing a complex e-commerce store, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to find this episode helpful. So what I'm going to do is just dive straight in, and I'm going to use the power of HTML itself to present rather than using Keynote, which I'd normally use. I'm going to use dive straight into HTML, uh, and we're going to take everything from here. So first of all, let me click on my link here. What is HTML? Well, let me read from Wikipedia. The hypertext markup language, or HTML, is a standard markup language for documents designed to be displayed in a web browser. It's often assisted by technologies such as cascading style sheets, or CSS, and scripting languages such as JavaScript. So briefly speaking, what HTML does is it holds all of the content for the page. So it's going to be your titles, paragraphs, images. It's the stuff on the page, but not what it looks like. It's not the presentation. Presentation is managed by the CSS. So that's the placement of those elements, the color of the and the font styles, um, whether things have borders or backgrounds and so on. And then JavaScript adds on to that presentation and gives you animation functionality. It can manage sort of advanced clicking events and so on. We're not going to be talking about JavaScript tonight. And to be honest, I don't think I'll do a webinar about JavaScript. It's less relevant, really, for what we do. However, the reason HTML is relevant is it's good to just understand broadly how the web works because it helps you when there are problems that need fixing, or at least to understand it if you're working with a web developer, what they're doing. Um, it's also, there's some really useful little tips and tricks I'm going to show you with CSS that will enable you to hack around with your site and get it to do some clever things. Now, I'm going to be talking about WordPress primarily, but you can use a lot of the CSS tricks on Squarespace, Shopify, and other sites as well. So it is handy to know if you just need to do some simple little tricks. But first of all, let's get an understanding of HTML. Oh, just to let you know, there's a couple of interesting links, which I'll make sure are on the post. So just to let you know that um, Tim Berners-Lee, you might remember, you might know that name. He was an Olympic, um, he sort of was part of the Olympic Games um, when we hosted it, when the UK hosted it. So he actually invented uh, the core of what HTML is. And you can see the first, there's a link to the first website here as well. And um, also, if you want a timeline of HTML and how it sort of grew out of different gem um, generalized markup languages, you can have a look at that as well. But for us, I'm just going to take us into HTML code and give you an example of what it looks like. So on the left hand side, we have a code block and this inside that code block is HTML. Now, because I'm a coder, I quite like dark mode. So I've got my code in dark mode and it just helps helps it show up more clearly here. Um, and on the right hand side, we've got the rendered HTML. So this is what the web browser will make of that HTML. So let's look at the content on the left, and I'll try and highlight key bits just so you know what's going on. So first of all, we've got these tags. Now, every uh, tag or element in HTML has an opening tag and a close tag. So when we start HTML, we start by saying this is HTML. So that's what this tag is. It's got these two angle brackets to signify this is a starting tag. And if we look all the way at the end, we've got a closing tag. And the closing tag looks exactly the same, except it's got a slash in it. So everything between this tag, the starting tag, and the end tag is HTML. That's what it's saying. Um, and every HTML page will have that. I mean, in fact, generally, HTML pages have this HTML block, a head block, and um, a body block. So let's look at the head block here. So we can see everything between these two elements is in the head. And we've got a title and meta description. So these are absolutely core for search engine optimization. And this is what the Yoast plugin for WordPress will insert or alter uh, amongst many other things. So the title here is what gets displayed in search engine. So in Google, this is the, the title actually gets shown in the snippet and the meta description as well. Both of these two feature heavily there. And uh, certainly in WordPress, you really want Yoast to be able to edit those or another search engine optimization plugin. But what these do broadly in HTML, um, they're not rendered on the page. As you can see in rendered HTML, we can't see these two 
at all. Um, but they are rendered, they would be rendered in the title. So if this was its own web page, we would see up in the little title element at the top, this is a web page. And the description is then um, hidden, hidden in the background. So we've got the description here. So the title is just a uh, uh, normal element, beginning title, uh, end element, and then we've got the text in between. The meta description is slightly different. What this means, what a meta tag is, it's um, a bit of information that describes some information. So we've got the HTML document itself, and this meta information describes that document. And there's lots of different types of meta tags, but the description one's quite common, certainly one we're using here. I mean, if you were to actually look in a, a normal website, um, uh, look at all the HTML on a normal website, you'll see lots of these for different things. Um, we might have a look at that a little bit later. But very broadly, that you can see that if we want a meta description, we have a meta uh, and then uh, tag, and then we've got name equals description. And that's just saying this particular meta tag is called description. And the content of this tag is outline for HTML webinar. And that's that's it, really. If you want this web page to show up in Google, that's what it would show. OK, so moving on out of the head, um, we're not going to look at any more in there for the moment. We move on to the body. So this is the main section that will show on the website. I'm going to quickly run through things here. We've got an image. We've got heading one, so the main heading on the page. Heading two, a subheading, if you will, slightly less important than the main one. Um, we've got a paragraph, paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph three. And then we've got a link. And then we've got a comment. And comments are very interesting. Um, so let's go back to the top again and look at how that renders on the site. Um, in fact, actually, let me walk through this image. So we've got an image with an opening tag. Um, it doesn't have a closing tag. It's a bit like the meta tag. You you kind of you, you don't have any content in between the tags. Everything is held within that same um, element. So we open with image, so IMG, and then we have SRC, which means source. Where do we get this image from? We have a URL in there, and this is a typical WordPress URL that goes. Um, we're looking in the WP content folder, the WordPress content folder in uploads, and then whenever uploads are added, or files are added to WordPress, they get put by default anyway, in date uh, folders. So our icon wireframe has been put there. And also when WordPress saves an image into the media library, it creates multiple versions of that file. So in this case, we've got our, um, we've got a one that's about the size of 1024 pixels. Depending on your WordPress install and your theme, that will change. But in this particular case, that's what it's added on. So we've got a location to the file, and this is a PNG. We've probably discussed different file formats in other webinars. Then we've got a width element, so um, width attribute, sorry. So this says that this we want that icon to be 100 pixels wide. And we've got a height element, so we want it to be 100 pixels wide, and we want it to be 100 pixels in height. And then we've got another attribute you're probably familiar with, which is the alt tag. So this is where we add in additional text that describes what that image is. Really useful for accessibility, super useful accessibility, where you, uh, you know, someone has low or no vision, so they can't see that image. Their speech reader, hopefully they're using a speech reader, will be able to read out that alt tag for them. Also, Google can read this to help understand what's in the image. So this whole block here describes what we're seeing over in this little icon. So it's just basically image is making a placeholder and then the source is saying where you want that image to come from. Now, normally that image comes from your website, but you could actually take that image from another website. You know, this link here, this bit of text here can be any URL at all. As long as it's referring to an image that can be displayed, it will render on there. There are some caveats to that, but generally speaking, that's it's, re, it's quite useful to know that you can pull an image from anywhere and put it in there. You may have heard of something called hot linking, which is basically doing that. It's where you're taking an image from someone else's site. So underneath that, we've got the heading number one. So this is a web page. That's how it's rendered there. And heading two underneath. Now you'll notice that they have some style, that they are they have a certain size to them and, and weight. Now that's because when when the browser is rendering text, it applies a default style to it. So it's got a default style sheet that it applies to everything. And when we're designing websites, we work against that default style sheet. So we'll start here 
and then we'll be changing the default style sheet to how we want it to be. But the default style sheet will always be there. So if you don't tell it what a H1 looks like, it's going to look like how the browser wants it to look, which is generally the same across all browsers. So we've got our headings here. Now they have an opening tag and a closing tag and everything in between that is your heading. Same for H2 and set. In fact, same for the most tags, most tags you'll be working with. Then we've got our paragraph tag. Again, we've got an opening tag and a close tag, but I've got something else in there and it's called a strong tag. And a strong tag just is saying to the browser, make this um, important, make it strong. So um, it's come, it comes from a tag that used to be called bold or B. But the problem with that is uh, HTML wanted to move away from specifying what things looked like and more just specifying what was in uh, the context of that particular um, bit of text. So what it's saying here is this is a paragraph and within that paragraph, the far paragraph, the first two words are strong. They're important. So by default, it's going to render it as bold. But there's no reason that couldn't be um, not bold. It could be let's make it blue or let's make it with a uh, slight board around it. There's lots of things we can do to change that. But by default, it's going to be bold. Moving on, I've done the same thing. So I've emboldened these paragraphs. Um, and then we have another paragraph with something different in there with EM. So we've got an opening tag and a closing tag. And within between that, we've got italic text. So these the EM tag stands for emphasis. So it's it's a bit like the bold tag. They're very similar. It's just that we, we want to emphasize the text, but it might not be as strong as the bold tag or the, the strong tag, sorry. So we use this emphasis. And again, we can use emphasis in lots of different ways, but generally speaking, it's used for italic text. So if you want something to just look slight, a little bit different, maybe you're referring to a footnote or something like that, then you might put it in italic text. I often like uh, use italic text for um, anything scripty or um, uh, written or maybe handwritten style like testimonials look quite good in italic. Then we have a link. So these are quite interesting. These are used, I mean, this is the, the founding cornerstone really of uh, the web and why it's so important is links and certainly for SEO is links between pages, um, between, between pages on your site and between pages that are not on your site, so external pages. So these are really important to understand they, how they work. And I've got the general basics in here for this link. Again, each link has an opening tag and a close tag, but we've got a combination of things here. We've got text between the tags, which is your link text. So it's actually what you want the link to say. And then you've got this thing called href, which is an attribute. And that's where you want that link to go to. So if I were to click on that link, it would go to our rather inventive website. I won't do that now because I'm going to lose my place. So we've got two things here. We've got the opening tag. And then within the opening tag, we have a href. And that says where this link goes to when I click on it. And then between the tags, we've got the actual text. You want hyperlink. And then you've got the end tag as well. And I've got the tag standing on its own here. But there's no reason why that tag cannot be within a paragraph tag or within a heading. You can put links pretty much anywhere. Um, you can even put them around a block of other elements. You don't, don't tend to do that, but you can do. So I could um, put this link tag around all of these elements. It means if I click on any one of them, it's going to take me to the website. And then, uh, so that's that's our link here. That's how it looks. And then last but not least, a comment. So you will, if you're looking through HTML uh, of a, your website or another website, you will see comments in there often uh, designers and programmers put them in to help them understand what's going on in their website um, so that they can find things for debugging purposes. Um, often they might re remove those comments when the site goes live, but sometimes it's left in there. Um, for example, Yoast, when um, when you add the plugin to your website, it will add a little area to say that, this, that Yoast has added this and, and what's below is, is Yoast content or re re relevant to Yoast. So comments are really useful because they won't be rendered by the browser. As you can see, you can't see this comment on here, but it is in the page. So if I were to inspect the HTML for this, I can see this comment, but it's not rendered. So that's really important. And you can use comments wherever you like. You can use them 
um, I've got the comment here, but there's no reason why I can't have the comment just above to say um, maybe to remind me that I need to replace the image or to say that this this image is just temporary. Or I can put some comments up in the head to say um, uh, that we need to um, change something later. So it, it's uh, the reason I'm showing you this is less so you write your own HTML because no one expects you to write all this by hand. I don't do it. I would hate to do it. Um, but it's really useful to understand HTML when you see it, when there are problems, because it, it will help um, help you fix those problems. So hopefully that's quite a useful introduction to see HTML code on one side and how it renders. Uh, and you should be able to actually pick your way through. So let's have a look at how HTML manifests itself in WordPress. So we're going to have a little peek behind the curtain in WordPress. And I'm going to as I've got little, my little prompts here, it's quite interesting seeing this because often I have all of my notes to one side when I'm going to do a walkthrough and they're not on the screen share, but I thought it'd be fun to actually show them. So what we're going to do is I've got an example page that we can load, um, which I think you've seen before. This will be on another webinar. Uh, it's just a sort of a, a playful homepage that we can we can use to, to demonstrate various elements. And what I want to do is just walk behind, uh, take you... Uh, on a walk on through the WordPress blog e block editor and how that translates into code uh, and really sort of show you how that code is is representing the, the page you can see. Go through those elements. What I will do, I've got a little note here to remind you that episode 34, I did a WordPress walkthrough. Um, so if you want to know more about the editing blocks within WordPress, I would watch that. Um, in this particular one, we're going to dive more into sort of HTML and what that means. But if you want to know about how to actually use the block editor in WordPress, watch that one. And um, before I forget, if you if you found this interesting, you want to learn more about HTML, then you can have a look at this HTML tutorial on W3 Schools. Um, I often, if I if I need to find out something and I search in Google, I often come up with W3 Schools websites. They've got um, you know very basic explainers about what's going on and little ways that you can actually try different things yourself to see how it works. It's usually uh, pretty good and fairly straightforward for someone who's learning. So let's go and have a look at this website um, and let's dive into the editor. So for most people where we've made the website, uh, you'll be using the standard WordPress editor. Uh, it's got a code name of Gutenberg, um, although that, you don't really see that anywhere. Um, and it's just a standard block editor where you can go and move components around. Some of you will be using other block editors like uh, Visual Basic and Elementor. Uh, sorry, not Visual Basic, Visual Composer, Visual Basic, something completely different. Um, Visual Composer, Elementor, and there are lots of others. Um, they all do a similar thing, allow you to move blocks around on your website. Um, but I'm going to show you this one. So we've got a core, few core things here. Um, because I edit websites a lot, I, I recognize that this is a heading one. It's the big heading at the top, paragraph underneath that. Then we've got what's called a media block. It's actually called media and text. Yeah, oops, let me go that. There we are, media and text. And within that media and text, we can have an image, a type, and then content on, on the right-hand side. And then I've made up like it could be little services offering, perhaps I've got so sort of three icons and some items underneath and then a call to action at the bottom. Let's have a look and see what that looks like in code. Now, to do that, we go up to the dot, 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 three vertical top dots in the top right. Click on that. We get lots of options. Um, I'm not going to go through these now. I'm just going to look at code editor. So we've got two choices between the editor, code editor or visual. Let's go into code. Now we jump into code editor and instantly there's probably some of you might be panicking going, well, there's a lot of stuff there. There is, but it's broken down. It's commented. And if you just pick your way through it, it should make sense. Now, what I'm going to do is maybe flip between the live view and the, the code view so we can see how it works. So if I bring up the live view in a new tab, we can then pick through it. So first, let's take this bit at the top. We've got a heading one and a paragraph. Let's have a look at that, what we've got here. We've got, I'm going to ignore these comments for the moment. These are comments WordPress adds um, for options and settings. So it adds these comments, which will be familiar um, when I was talking through the HTML. And this is just for WordPress. And then it actually adds the HTML that will be rendered in there. And the reason it does this is it means it's very portable. It's not, um, you could copy and paste this into another um, just a plain uh, HTML page, and it would render correctly, and the comments will be ignored. Only WordPress uses the comments. 
The problem with some many other block editors is if you were to copy and paste effectively the code that you see here, um, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't do anything. So this is really useful the way it represents this. So we'll ignore the comments for now, but they are useful. Um, but if we're looking to find our main heading and paragraph, we can find it here. So here's the main heading, bold headline statement. We can see the starting elements and the, the closing element, and we can see um, some attributes in here. Um, and WordPress uses classes a lot. I will come on to classes uh, in a little bit later, but what classes are, are they a way of giving it specific names that you can use to for styling purposes. So in here, we're just saying it's a block, uh, it's a heading, and it's, uh, we want text align center. And then there's a special, what I call a magic code in here, which I've added, which is called hug next. And that basically uh, for me, and it'll make sense later, um, just remove some padding, um, some margin uh, spacing basically between the heading and the paragraph beneath it to hug them together. And then underneath that, we have the paragraph. So opening paragraph of the text to set the scene. We've got a beginning element and an end element and we've got some a styling class in there. And this just says hacks, has text center. And then looking down, we've got some space and then we've got our media um, section here, media and text. Let's have a look at those. So here we can see the spacer. It is actually a spacer and we're saying we want it a height of 50 pixels. So there's a little attribute there. Um, this area hidden, that's for accessibility reasons. And it's just saying true, which is um, hide it from an accessibility point of view, it's irrelevant. It's a, it's a visual element only. And then here's a class in case we want to talk, we want to reference it for some reason. And then onto the media block. Now this is, gets a little bit more complicated and it's actually um, covers quite a few of different set, few different sections on here. But if we look at the start, we've got WP media text. And then what we need to do is find the ending version of that. And then everything in between is to do with it. So if we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, now we can see the ending one. And you can see it's the ending one because it's got a little slash there. But remember, it's a comment, so this won't do anything. You won't see it. It's just, it's just helpful for us to understand what's going on in the code. So we know that everything between this tag and this tag is to do with the median text. And let's pick our way through it. So we can see that this is a comment for median text saying that this is the link we want for an image. So this is the media link. Um, there's some specific options, which are options based on what you've set on the right hand side. Um, and then we've actually got how it renders it. So it's saying we are having a div and if I haven't explained a div tag, but a div tag is basically a, a group, it's a holder and you can put it around things to group them together. So that's what we're doing here. We're using it to um, uh, group text together. So we're actually saying all of this median text uh, is a combination of um, a title, three paragraphs, um, and a link, I think. And so we can see that here. We've got the title is a heading two. We've got a paragraph, one, two, three, and we've got a link here. So we can see all those elements, and that matches up to what we can see here. Title, three paragraphs, and a link. So let's continue working our way through. And the div here just it groups all of those together, basically. So we've got our group. I'm not going to go and explain all of these classes now, but they basically give it a name. So we've got our group. We've got our figure, which, uh, you know, in technical terms, saying it's uh, like an illustration or an image. Um, and then in that figure, we've got an image. And here's the reference to where that image is on the Internet. We've also got the alt text isn't particularly pretty. You know, if I were doing it properly, I'd probably want to tidy this up and get rid of these dates at the end. Then we end the image because it's you don't have an end tag in it. It's kind of um, self-closing, so it's closed as it opens. And then we have our figure closing. And then we have another div with inside, which is for our text on the right-hand side. And that contains all of our text. And then we close the tags. So we close, close, and then we close everything else. So it's not that complicated. If you sort of pick your way through, you can see all the individual components there. Let's see if there's anything else interesting. Um, let's have a look on here. Oh, columns. So these are three different columns. Let's have a look at that one. 
So let's scroll to the top and work our way down. So now we can find columns. So this is saying we're starting the columns block. Here's a div to start a collect our collection of columns. And this is our first column. And it's the first column. We're not calling it the first column. It just is the first column. So it's going to be the one on the left-hand side. Things tend to run from top to bottom, left to right by default, unless you can change that with style, but that's how we're going to do it. And we can see that that column has in it um, an image here, a figure with an image in it. It also has a heading. It also has a bit of text, and then the column ends. And then we have another column, same thing, and then it ends. And then we have another column, which ends. And then at the end, we have a spacer, and then we have a paragraph, which has our call to action in it. And that call to action also has a link. That link you should recognize. So hopefully that makes sense, looking through the code editor to see how things marry up. But let's have a look at a few things that might be useful to you if you are actually, um, if you want to, um, you've got some formatting issues on the page. So let's exit that. Go back to my notes. So formatting problems. Yeah, a couple here. I'll just read them out and then we'll go and do them. So using shift and enter to make a line break. This is something I see all the time, actually, in lots of different editing packages, word included. But it's basically where you want to get um, text to be on two lines. It's, um, But you don't want them to be split into two different elements, which is what would happen by default. So I'll show you what I mean. So we've got this little bit of text at the bottom, a call to action, which spreads a lot along the page. But I want it to read... If you like this page, new line, contact us and let us know. That's how I'd like it to read. Um, now, if I just click here and press enter, what that has done is actually created two separate paragraphs, which if I were to save it and look at the page, it's like this, two separate paragraphs. I don't want that. I want it as one paragraph. So what we need to do is hold down shift and press enter. And that works on Macs and PCs. And now it's actually as one element. And the reason behind that is if you want to style it, let's give it a style um, in here of uh, blue is probably not the best color. Let's go, let's go with this. If I take the style off for a second, if I were to do it as two separate ones, and I click on this and then give it a styling background of this, it only styles the first paragraph. Then I'd have to go and style that one. And then we realize, oh, they're two separate blocks. That's not going to work. If I do it like that, they're grouped together. So I'll actually leave that block color on there, make it gray so we can see everything better. Um, so that was one thing that I want to show you. That's really super useful. You'll also find if you're getting the same problem in Word or other um, text editors, doing shift enter will will keep them together. So something else I see a lot in HTML is this. It's where um, uh, an app and it looks to me it's messy because we've got this little extra uh, line appearing after after the text and it's because someone has put a space in the area that's hyperlinked so everything that has a link on it generally has an underline as well and if we try and delete it then we've got no space there so what you've got to recognize in this let me put it back what you've got to recognize is in the difference between um, when you're in the link and outside the link. And so I can see I'm just outside the link. And when I'm in the link, WordPress will display this. And that's really handy to know that we are in the link. So if I want to delete that space within the, within the link and not have um, a line, I need to know the difference. So let's delete the space. And then we'll go to the right, just using the right arrow on my keyboard. And then I'm outside the link, in the link, outside the link, in the link, outside the link. So now I'm outside the link, I can press space and I won't have those annoying little spaces appearing after that. So I'm gonna update that. Um, what else do I want to show? Oh yes, so alignment issues. I don't have a demonstration as such for this. I was trying to think of an, an example, but I couldn't find one. But I do know when we're copying website content over from one place to another, and maybe it's using a different website builder, we get a lot of craft and additional stuff in there that we don't need and don't want. So often we need to strip all that out and then, then paste it into WordPress. Now, generally speaking, if I were to paste in um, text from uh, another web builder or another place, WordPress here in these editors does a pretty good job of getting rid of it. And normally it's not a problem. 
But if you're using something like WooCommerce products or other page builders, then it will faithfully retain all of the extra information. So I'm trying to point some bits out like uh, additional background colors here. Maybe you don't want um, widths on images um, or additional background stylings or font weights. A lot of editors will faithfully retain all of that. And it's, I think, good to get rid of it and clean things up. If you're Certainly if you're having problems, I tend to find it's you, normally when things aren't looking right or maybe you've got text pushed over to one side, it's normally a problem with the HTML. So the good thing to do is before you copy and paste it in is to wash it. So I'm going to copy this text here. Open up a new link to this little website, HTML Washer, and I can paste in the text, click wash, and hidden that it's now cleaned the text out for me. So it's got rid of any comments, it's got rid of any background styling and anything that we don't need, any attributes, and it's kept it nice and simple. So I can then copy that um, straight into my, um, it, it's usually like a, a WordPress or a WooCommerce product or something like that, um, where, where we come a cropper with a, additional code. So this is a really useful thing to do. What else do we want to do? Yeah, I think that covers everything there. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to CSS styles. This is where you can start to have fun and you're, uh, you're working on the presentation side of your website. So what I'm going to do is just save that. Uh, and I'm going to go into the customizer. So you can find that, look at, look for customize in the admin bar at the top, brings you into this mode in WordPress and look for additional CSS. Some themes don't have additional CSS, most do. If they don't, the theme will provide a place to put additional CSS in, maybe they're managing themselves. So let's go through a few examples here. Um, right, so first thing I wanna do is just show you how you can change various elements. In fact, before I do that, what I'll do is I'll show you a very cool tool to bring up the inspector. Now this works by default in Chrome, but in Safari, you have to turn on developer tools to be able to see this. But if I wanted to change the color of this and I wanted to know what it is, I can go into the inspector. So I can select it, click inspect, it brings up this window at the bottom. And the inspector is really useful for identifying what components are what, because I can hover over them uh, in the inspector and it actually shows me the selection in the, um, in the main HTML window. So I can actually hover over my media, media element here and I can see it's a whole block. Let me scroll that up a bit. I can see that's a whole block. Or I can come down, look at the image. I can look at the text in each paragraph. But let's say I want to alter that text. What I can do is click on the text here um, and I can see it's CSS styling on the right hand side. So I can see it's got a font size of 2EM and EM basically means the size of an M. <laughs> so let me try and find, find an M here. So that is the size of an M. Um, what it's saying is it wants it to be two of those in width. Um, and that's what it bases the sizing on. The nice thing about using EMs is that it's kind of relative um, sizing. So it means, and it feels quite natural generally. So it means that everything, if, if you change that, it sort of, it will change it for everything else. Whereas, so let me explain. If I were to make my sort of base um, document to have one EM as its size, um, all the text is going to be the standard size that the browser presents it at. Uh, if I put it, the text, the title as a 2EM, it's going to be like double the size based on that M. If I then make the base size 2EM, the title is then going to effectively be 4EM, but I won't have to change it. It automatically scales. So it really helps. But that's just to explain what that is. If I wanted to change the size of it, I could do that so I can make it bigger. Or I can make it smaller. So if you see if I put it as one EM, it's exactly the same as my base size of text. But I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger like that. But actually, um, I also want to make it red. So what I might do is I can type in this bit at the top here and click on this. And I can actually type directly into the web browser um, uh, a statement. So I know that if I type color with the American spelling, red, so color, colon, red, and then semicolon, that will tell that um, element to be red, as you can see, it's rendered. And, and this is why this view is nice because it does it all live. So that's one way of doing it. You can actually go directly into the um, editor here, the inspector, and actually have a look and directly manipulate things here, which is really useful. And I use this a lot with clients to um, show an example of how it might look. 
um, before I actually commit to commit the changes. And it's a really good way of quickly trying it. But really, for most people, you're going to want to commit those CSS changes um, to the site. So what we'll do is we'll disable that and we'll use something else. Uh, if I can just code this in. So because I know it's a H2, I type this in H2. And then open curly brackets. And this editor puts them in uh, both for you. Press space, so we're in between those curly brackets. And I type the same thing, color red. Color, colon, red, semicolon. And it's going to do the same thing. And now we can just see the H2 is red. If I want to make H2s and H3 red, I can put H2, comma, H3. And so it's creating a list, really. I could even put paragraphs, but that's a bit too much for me. Now, there's something else you can do. I don't know if you remembered when we were having a look at the code, but um, there's a class in here, a CSS class called um, WP block heading. You can see it here. So all titles in WordPress are WP block heading. So what I can do is rather than saying I want the head, heading two and heading three to be read, I can actually go, I can put in that class. However, there's one thing you must do, otherwise it won't work, is all classes have a dot before them. That's what denotes what a class is. So dot WP block heading then makes all of our titles read. So what else do we need to do to jazz up this page a little bit? So we've done these. Oh, let's make links red as well. So I'm going to make a separate entry here and put a bit of space between it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll copy what we've got here. So I've added a comment, just like a HTML comment. It's slightly different formatting, but it's uh, very useful to identify what you're doing and what the below um, CSS means. So in this, I've put change the link color, and I could put change the link color to red. So now we can see um, A color red, which it is. And we know it's A. If we don't remember from HTML, we can right click, go to an inspector, and we can see its element is A. And we've said we want it red. But I think red's a bit too harsh for this site. I'm going to go for something more subtle. So I've actually got a link here. So this really useful palette tool. I won't explain much about it. It's very cool. You might want to have a play with it if you want to find color palettes. I use it all the time. But I found a, a green color I quite like, and it's given me lots of color gradients, which will all complement each other. So I'm going to use this first one. I'm just going to copy that. And you might be thinking, what is that, Ben? What are you copying? Well, that's a hex code. It's basically a representation of red, green, and blue. So if I put it in here, copy it in where it says red, and you can see it changes to green. And what it's doing is basically those first two characters are red, the next two are green, those two are blue. Um, and they're in hex format. Now you may not understand it, so you probably want to use something like color space or a color palette picker to be able to find your colors and then just copy and paste it. But you can, if you know your hex colors, you can just type them in. Um, but actually I want, I want it all to be green. That'll look a bit nicer. So um, I can actually just copy. Oops. I can copy this in here, make all that green. That looks nicer. And then I can actually simplify my CSS a bit further because if I want all block headings and the anchor to be green, I can just delete all of this and kind of merge them together. In fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do it in a way that's easier for you to see. I'll put that in. So we're talking, we're targeting the block headings and anchors, delete all this. And we can see that one statement will do everything. So moving on, um, I think we probably want to make these icons green because they're blue. We've got a green theme. So I'm going to use something pretty clever. I'm going to use a filter. So I've just put the filter in. And what it's done is magically changed all of the blue icons to green, which is quite useful. Now, I'll explain what it's done by using a color wheel. So what I'll do is I'm going to just delete that for a second, let them go back to blue. So if we look at our color wheel here, we can roughly pick blue. So this is a blue here. What the filter does, the hue change, is it will rotate the color wheel by a certain amount of degrees. Now we know from uh, maths class that all circles have 360 degrees. So 
if we want to change the color to green to match our um, to match our scheme that we've got going on here, we need to shift blue by that many degrees. So we imagine that zero degrees is around here and we need to move all the way around. So 180 is gonna be about here. And then we need a little bit more. We know 360 is here. We kind of wanna go in between. So 180, somewhere bit between that 300 sounds right, which is what I picked. So let's put that back in. Uh, sorry, 280. Um, if we wanted to go with red, we might guess that uh, 180 is going to get us to orange. So let's test that. 180. It does. Ignore that one that's not colouring in the middle. That's a, a rendering error. It will colour up later. Um, so 180 degrees. If we want to get to red, we need to go a little bit less than that. So let's um, knock off. Uh, let's bring it to 150. Yeah, it's a bit more red. 130 or going a bit too far the other way. So something like that, 150 seems about right. So that's how you can really play with the colors and it's great. The, obviously the problem is it's only rotating the hue so all the colors are gonna change. So I'll, I'll give you an example. If we wanted to change these to make that green, we couldn't just rotate the hue, it's not gonna work. Um, so in order to, to, to do this one, it's not a standard image, it's actually a background image. So we have to right click on this and we want this figure, that's what we're trying to change. And it's actually this class here. If I copy that, and if you remember, we want to add another one in. So we go comma, dot, put that in. And it's rotated it by uh, 150 degrees, which doesn't quite look right, but it is interesting for sure. I'll put this back to green. Um, let's get that. In fact, no, it was 218, wasn't it? There we go. So it looks pretty funky. So if you want funky images, you can certainly do that. But I don't think that's what we want. Perhaps a grayscale would look better. So um, what I need to do is create a separate entry just for that grayscale. So I'm just going to copy and paste the one I've already done. So it's the same thing. We're just addressing the block media text and the media class, and we're called, using this filter called grayscale. Now, where am I plucking these from? How do you know what all of these are? Well, even I don't. Sometimes you just need to search on, on Google, so you'll put in something like CSS and then what you're trying to do. As I said, normally um, W3Schools comes up, so I've got another, another resource here, W3Schools, but it's all about CSS, and so it's got, again, lots of all the different things you can use, um, and then you can try different things yourself in their sort of live editor. So that's really useful. So what I'll do to finish on, just to sort of really wow you, is show you some cool, a bit more advanced stuff you can use with, uh, you can use CSS for, and that's to make up your own classes. So rather, if you remember that WordPress has got lots of classes in it, lots of names, we can actually make up our own and add them to the HTML. So what I wanna do is a couple of things. I want to sort these images out. They just don't look right, do they? We've got different sizes going on here. It looks a bit of a mess. And I want to just highlight this first part of the copy. So let's go back to our editor. Um, I'm going to add in here where it says additional CSS classes. I've already left this in. Highlight. That's just what I'm calling it. So I'm calling this paragraph, this paragraph here, I'm calling it highlight. And then I'm going to select not that column, I'm going to go and select the entire column, then I'm going to go and select the entire group of them, and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it icons. Update that. That's the important thing. Then I go to my customizer and I update the page. Now you notice it still hasn't done anything yet because I need to add the styles, but if I right click on this and look at my paragraph, I can see it's got a P for my paragraph and we've got a class highlight, which means I've added that name highlight in. So let's add in my special text. So first of all, highlight. I'll put that in. Great. So we've got some green background, which is all right. I'm using the same color green that we had um, from our color wheel, it looks all right, but uh, it's, uh, the contrast isn't great. The text isn't standing out, doesn't look very interesting. So let's change that a little bit. What I'm gonna do is just add some padding around it. Um, let's start off with a standard 1M width. So you can see 
how this M should be the same size roughly. Um, well, in fact, this entire block is the same size as that. That looks too big to me. So I'm just going to make that smaller. We can go in point sizes. So I can go 0.5M, so half of an M. That looks better. Um, we're going to make the text a different color because I don't like how that looks. I want a nice light color against that dark green. So I'm going to go to our color wheel, sorry, our color space. And I'm going to use this spot palette here. I'm going to select this hex code, nice light green. And I'm going to just paste that in. Yeah, that looks interesting. And I'm going to add a funky border radius. Now, border radius was amazing when it came out in CSS and it allows us to do lots of interesting things that would have been really complicated before. But now we can just specify how many pixels we want it to be radius by. So you can go for something like 1EM. You can see now it's got a radius on there, but that's a bit too much. That's kind of using the same calculation 1EM for, um, for the size of how big that is, but I don't like it. So we'll change that to pixels. 10 pixels. Yeah, I quite like that. That's good. And you can just alter that size up or down. So we could have 100 pixels. It's going to be ridiculous. Um, but 10 pixels looks nice there. OK, very classy. So what the final thing we're going to do is just line our icons up. Now, to do this, I use a little uh, a cool little trick, actually. So I'm just going to copy it in and I will explain how it all works. So I paste that in. Now, it's tidied them up a little bit. They're a little bit better. So what it's forcing it, it it's doing is basically if I if I right click on here, inspect. So we can see that um, here is the block of columns, and I'm, I've given it a name of icons, and then we can see each block. If I just close that, we can see each column inside, and then within it, we have an image. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, look for the block called icons and then find any images within it. And then give them an aspect ratio of one by one, one to one, which basically says, make it a square, fit it within a square. And then I've got this extra option here, which says, make whatever's in it fit within it, make it contain. There's uh, another term you can use, which is cover which basically says, make it fill the space completely. And that's really useful if you want images that sort of fill headers or pages and it looks really cool. But for us, we actually want to see all those icons. So I need to put in contain. Now I've found just with experience that if you want something to line up like this, you want the heights to be the same. So what, and it's, it's often works better to have it as a slight, a uh, bit of a wide screen shape. It makes things fit in better. So if I change this aspect ratio to 16 by nine, as in my comment, we can see that all the heights are now the same and our, our um, little images look right, they feel right. And this is a trick I often use for logos as well. If we've got a gallery of logos on WordPress, they can be all different shapes and sizes. If I do something like this, it makes sure they all sit in the center. And it mean, main, means that logos that are sometimes too tall or too long or too wide, they all fit within this nice box uh, and look neat. So this is a little trick that's very, very useful. So I call them magic classes. Sorry, I call them magic codes. Um, but really, each one of these is called a CSS class, which you can think of as a name. But you can make up your own. And you, there's lots of different ones you can use. Um, you'll notice that I, I think I use one earlier for this hug next. So as part of our theme, I've built in a few of these magic codes that allow things like this. So if I just go in and take out hug next, you can see that it opens up the spacing because that's the default spacing. But in this particular case, I want it to be a bit closer. And you can do lots of fun things like that to uh, improve your site or tweak it. And as I say, it's useful across WordPress, Squarespace, in fact, anything that uses HTML and allows you to adjust the CSS you can just dive in and make changes. I think that's everything I wanted to show you. So we're done there. What we'll do is we'll make sure all of these notes are on our website as normal, um, as well as what I've got here. Um, hopefully you found that useful. It's actually uh, something I've been wanting to do for some time. I know I had a client asking me about it probably a couple of years back, and I thought it'd be really good to show you some of the, the different ways we can use HTML in case you need to dive in, or, or at least so people can see what I'm doing. Um, so sorry it's taking so long to do it. So next up, 
we are going to have a grab bag and we're going to answer your marketing questions. So do send them in to support at ratherinventive.com. Um, any any new ones, we'll try and compile them in there. Otherwise, we, we've we compiled a list of questions from customers, all that I get during consulting or um, web where, while we're doing um, web development. So uh, we are here every Friday at 10 a.m. If you want to ask a question or you want to be a guest, then email support at ratherinventive.com. And remember, all the episodes are available on ratherinventive.com slash club. That's ratherinventive.com slash club. Thank you for watching and see you next week. Bye.